Hi everybody! In today's lesson, we are going to study relative clauses. Relative clauses sometimes are known as defining clauses or adjective clauses. So when you see relative clauses, and maybe another book, you can see defining clauses or another book, you can see adjective clauses. So when you see three of them, you should understand they are same. So they are not different from each other. In relative clauses, the important thing that we should remember all the time, we have something, we have some item, we have some person and we must we have to define him or her or it because when we say a noun a general noun we don't understand which object or which person we are talking about let's see with an example so you will understand better for example there is a car there and so you say the car is mine so when you say the car is mine, I understand there's a car, but when I see outside, there are too many cars and I don't understand which car is yours, which car is your car. So in that point, when you tell me the car is mine, I'm asking you, you are talking about which car? Which car is yours? So in that sentence, you can understand, you need to define, you need to give information, a description, a definition about your car. And then I will understand which car is your car. So the car, let's see a feature. The car which is blue, so when you put which pronoun after the noun, instead of which, we can also use that. For people, and we all the time choose who or that, but for objects and or for things, we all the time choose which or that. After the car, after the noun that I want to talk about, the car, which is blue, I put a verb. So this verb is its feature. This verb tells me about something, about that item, that person, that object. So the thing. So I can understand, I can differentiate which car is your car? So this is a special feature. It belongs to it. The car, which is blue, so I understand. There are many cars, but I'm checking the blue one. So the car, which is blue, and then you say, is mine. So in order to define this noun with special feature, with some a distinctive special feature you are telling something about that car maybe the car which is parked on the corner so it can be passive it can be active doesn't matter but we understand after the object, we put pronoun and after this pronoun, when we say a verb, I understand this verb is the feature of that object. So the car which is parked on the corner is mine. Let's talk about a person. The boy, after the boy, after the person, because it's a human being, so the boy who or that, the boy who stands over there, for example, there is a boy, but there are some other boys, 
and I say the boy is my brother and you say which boy which boy you are talking about so in that point I'm giving a special thing about my brother maybe about clothes maybe about some action that he is doing at the moment or look so stands the other boys are sitting maybe but your brother so that boy so I'm talking about a special important feature about him so the boy you can understand which boy who stands over there this is the verb so this verb can be in everything so because in simple present tense or in simple past tense the meaning doesn't change you just give information when does he do this action for example at the moment maybe he is eating something so I can say the boy who is eating a hamburger now so you see there are some boys they are playing games and they are chatting they are drinking something and there is one boy and he is eating something so I am giving a special feature about him I am defining I am showing him in my sentence the boy who is eating at the moment this is his special feature the boy who is eating a hamburger is my brother this is the verb is my brother so in English in relative clauses the main object the main focus the main point is to define the object to define the person I am giving information about him so you can understand which boy I am talking about or I'm giving a special feature about the object here and then after that you understand which car I am talking about which car belongs to me which car I am talking I am giving I'm showing you so the object and the person is defined with the help of pronouns the boy who stands over there this is the adjective part the car which is blue the car which is part so I am giving information about that object and then so you can understand which object or which person I am talking about so in English for people we use who for objects and other things for animals for example we use which or instead of who or which we can also choose that as you can see here instead of which I can also use that I must choose one of them or instead of who I can say that I must say the boy who stands or the boy that stands over there in relative clauses we also have a different usage and then I will show you the woman who my mother works lives next door in this sentence I'm talking about a woman and I say the woman lives next door and you ask me which woman you are talking about which woman you are telling now so I am giving an information about that person so after the woman I use again who and after that I make a whole sentence my mother works so this is the adjective close part and leaves this is my verb in those sentences after pronoun if I put a person a subject and then verb I can also say whom but in formal English in written English especially in British English we choose whom but for who you can use again 
doesn't matter because in spoken English especially it is not problem the woman who what is the person here so you can see a subject here clearly so this is the sentence and then with this sentence you are defining her you are defining with this sentence you are giving information about that person the woman who my mother works so I understand now which woman you are talking about not any kind of woman the woman which woman your mother works with her so the woman who my mother works this is my adjective and subject part and then after that verb leaves next door let's say with an example the boy whom I play tennis is very cute here I'm telling you the boy is very cute you say which boy you are talking about the boy and then I'm giving information about him and then you will understand the boy whom I play tennis or who again or we say that also here we can use that that is used everywhere doesn't matter the boy who I play tennis this is my subject so after who or whom or that with my sentence I'm giving defining I'm giving information about him and then you understand a specific boy the boy whom I play tennis is very cute so after the boy you are putting who or whom or that and then you are making whole sentence so here also my mother works and my mother works after that you can say I play tennis so why I am especially giving this information because in relative clauses after relative pronouns if you are making a whole sentence to describe to define you can omit who or whom or that so instead of telling like this you can say the boy I play tennis so after relative pronouns again you will check there is not a verb after relative pronoun when we use verb we must use relative pronoun we must hear we must write we cannot omit but after relative pronoun if we follow it by a sentence you can omit so you don't have to use it if you want to use it you can use it if you don't want to use it you can omit it so this sentence also is possible to see the boy I play tennis is very cute this is totally correct so both of them are correct so in English there are some relative pronouns that can be omitted and like this so in order to understand and all the time to make correct sentences you can differentiate after pronoun if there is a full sentence you can omit it but after a pronoun like this the boy who plays tennis with me for example is very cute this is the perfect example so here the boy who plays tennis after pronoun you can see a verb so this is not a full sentence so because of that verb you all the time must use and hear and write relative pronouns you can never omit it so the boy I play tennis is very cute it's a definition sentence and another version the boy who plays tennis with me is very cute all the time it is possible to give information about the people or about the objects that we especially want to emphasize so especially in intermediate levels and upper intermediate levels and advanced levels and for some exams such as IELTS and TOEFL you all the time must use these relative clauses correctly
And while speaking or while writing, all the time, the things that you will show your English will be better to pronounce. And that's all from me. If you have any further question about where to close this, you can email me, you can write comments, and then I will be really very happy when I reply your messages. Thank you.